G'day all, I'm Sharpie101 and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. For my very first season on YouTube, this is going to be a somewhat chill, fun guide, but it's going to be an extremely heavily modded and mainly based on building space stations, planet bases and scan satellites using mods like USI and MKS, which is Umbra Space Industries and Modular Colonization Systems, which adds food, radiation, homesickness to the actual Kerbals themselves, as well as lots of near future mods, Parallax and Astronomer's Visual Pack will be installed as well, but I'll get into more very shortly. So let's quickly head into CCAN, aka the Comprehensive Kerbal Archive Network, and I'll explain a few of the main mods I have installed to start with. And, for those of you that are unfamiliar, CCAN is a fantastic mod manager for KSP, which I have a simple two minute tutorial that's in the top right of your screen right now, so make sure you check that out if you're interested. So, with that being said, let's get into CCAN, and then into the game settings, and then the game very quickly. I'll see you there. Alrighty then, here we are over in CCAN, our Kerbal Space Program Mod Manager. It is running in KSP 111.1, .1, and that's the playthrough I will be in this series. I'll just name out a few of these, kind of somewhat quickly, and explain what they actually do. Most of them are dependencies, as there are 83 mods that we are going to start with in this playthrough slash guide. Uh, first of all, we've got Astronomer's Visual Pack with the 8K textures. That'll allow clouds, uh, the stars, as well as the galaxies, the skin texture itself. Scrolling down, the better time warp continued allows us to improve the time warping as you see in the type ro top right hand side, but it gives us more flexibility on the height above the surface of each of the planets to allow you to time warp faster or physical time warp at a lower altitude of each of the planets. It's a really great mod, I, I really suggest everyone to get this one. Scrolling down a little bit further, we've got Distant Object Enhancement. That one just allows you to see objects a little bit further, but this may or may not stay as it's pretty impactful on my game so far. Running an i7-7700K. Uh, Doc Rotate uh, OCD well, mod, pretty much. EVE allows just a lot better stability. Coming down a little bit further, we've got the Kerbal Alarm Clock with USI and having to feed all the Kerbals while they're out on space stations or such and such. This will allow me to set an alarm, say if, it's, if I've got a planet base on Minmus for instance, I'll have this alarm trigger a week prior before my Kerbals start starving for the fact that it's going to take me roughly a week to get a rocket to that planet and success that mission, in other words. Really way, really weird way of putting that, but you, you get what I mean anyway. Kerbal Attachment System allows you to attach pipes and all sorts of stuff to connect different things on your base really quite easily, and just items that your Kerbals can carry around themselves. Uh, coming on down, we've got Construction that allows different parts, like... Um, Great kind of winches for uh, big movable stands on wheels to move stuff around on different planets. That may be really handy while on the MUN for the fact that it's got a higher gravity than it does in Minmus. The Copernicus itself is a dependency of the AVP, as I was talking about before, as it does change the texture of the galaxy and the stars in the background when you go to the map view, etc. Uh, Mechjev and Engineer for All I will be using for the fact that it gives you the Delta configs and all the values you need to see up in the top middle of your screen and I'm probably showing you right now in my editor phase. Thank you editor Sharpie. And the Engineer and Mechjev for All allows me to save one or two parts per rocket as everything will already be included in every rocket or plane or whatever it is I do build in the future. So all my near future obviously allows a lot of stuff to be included in the game. Lots of parts, whether they be actual aircraft parts, wings, uh, air intakes, etc, etc. But I mainly like getting all the batteries and the nuclear devices, the decaying RTGs. So the uranium or whatever it is in inverted commas will decay over time in your actual mobile base that's in space or whatever it is it may be. Uh, coming on down, this is the first time I will be trying Parallax. 
and I was really looking forward to this one for the fact that it changes all the textures of the surface of all the planets and the comets or meteors, whatever you want to call, into something absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to using this one. Planet Shine is what every YouTuber pretty much uses, but also my eyesight is really quite terrible. So what this mod really does is it allows reflection off the planet onto your space station that's orbiting around it to give it more light so you can see both sides. For instance, one side of your space station would be in the sunlight, but the opposite side would be extremely dark for unknown reasons that's not really quite realistic. So the planet shine is really going to help me out and I'll be asking you to help me in changing the brightness of settings for the YouTube compression, etc. So moving on down a little bit further, Real Plume. Not too sure if this one is actually currently working in my version, but I'll have to play with it a bit. And it gives better um, exhaust visual effects from rocket boosters or anything like that compared to what the stock were. Coming on down further, we've got the ScanSat that allows me to scan for resources with my um, scanning satellites, obviously. Uh, to hopefully in the future, I may want to do and launch out my mobile colony, which I built over two years ago, but never actually launched it in version 1.8, I think I was running back then. So I'll be really looking forward to doing that. Scatterer allows uh, pretty much better performance in your game with all the visual mods and things like that pretty much overall. The sun flare allows the auroras and all sorts of stuff you see on Kerbin itself. Science Relay is a brilliant mod and I really do like this one. Just say you're on a planet like Minmus and you want to send all your science to your Minmus space station. This allows it but also gives you the option to give you a penalty like you would have sending the science or whatever it is back to Kerbin, but instead you can send it specifically to a space station or base or whatever it is that has a specific satellite on it, so a specific part almost. It, it's really quite balanced in my opinion. Coming down we've got stage recovery and this one I love it. If you're in career mode and you want to try and save a bit of money, all you've got to do is whack a couple parachutes on your booster stages that come off as you go into orbit around Kerbin or your planet or whatever. The ones that will be returned automatically, and I'll explain this a lot more in detail uh, when we get into the game itself, but it automatically activates the parachutes and all sorts of stuff to allow those solid rocket boosters or whatever it is to come down safely so you're able to recover the money and the funds from that quite nicely. Stocker-like station parts. This is the updated version of what I was using last time, so it'll be quite interesting to see the difference in the last compared to this one. But this allows parts to be added to the game, to be added to space stations that also work with habitation uh, for the fact that the, your Kerbals will get homesick and then all of a sudden they will refuse to work. So I'll be chucking a lot of antennas and remote control of some sort on all my rockets in case that does happen to make sure they can get home safely and I don't screw up. Uh, Janitor's Closet, moving down a little bit further, allows pretty much one mod that you can tell other mods to show or not on your right side toolbar of your game when you're launching or in the game itself. It's quite good. The toolbar is the toolbar I was exactly talking about, that janitor's closet kind of allows you to specify what you want shown and what you don't want shown. Uh, the controller, same thing, it just allows you better controllability on any of the windows you have popped up. So if I were to click on a window in Windows or something like that and it's over the top, I can move that. But if I have one window behind a window, Having this toolbar controller will allow me to click the window behind it and it will allow me to select it like you would normally in Windows. The Trajectories mod, I've had a bit of a hit and miss on this one. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to have to do a bit of finagling on this one, but it is what it says it does. It pretty much gives you an X marks the spot on where your rocket's going to land on any of the planetary bodies as you come into land etc. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so 
bit of a hit and miss on that one. The trigger AU flags, I am Aussie through and through, so Aussie, Aussie, Aussie for all you Aussies out there. This one allows me to get lots of different flags. I'm probably going to do the trippy flag like I normally do. Uh, Twig scale allows you to enlarge or shrink down practically any part you want in the game to scale to your rocket, just so I'm probably flashing something on the screen right now as a perfect example. As you see, my orange tank around the bottom of my Minmus lander, the science lander, is really large compared to the top. If I were to shrink that down with this mod, I'd have a much better aerodynamic stability on it, launching off any of the planetary bodies with air or an, an atmosphere. So it's a really great mod to have, and it is very balanced. So if you shrink that tank down, that fuel tank down, it will actually reduce the amount of fuel in that tank. So I may or may not use this. I try not to use it as I find it a little bit cheaty, but the USI and the MKS is what this whole season is about pretty much and i absolutely love this mod there's several other mods and i'm sure everyone will be commenting down below what they are but there's quite a few of them and several of them aren't quite compatible and i'm very used to this usi mks mods they add a lot of stuff they add sickness to your kerbals food you have to use hydroponics on your space stations to make food with mulch and fertilizer. You have water. My mobile colony will have like six drills, as many drills as I can to pull as many resources as I can out of any planetary body I'm on to then convert it into material kits and space credits, which I can then use MKS, I'm pretty sure, the colonization system to then be able to build rocket prefabs of sorts on any planetary body as long as I have enough material kits and all the sorts of resources needed for that. So I'll get into all that as I've never been able to do that in the past and I'm really looking forward to that. The life support is the radiation, the food and all of the above. The homesickness has got to be my biggest downfall but we'll do it anyway because it's a great fun and all my screw-ups will probably go into some sort of blooper reel at the end of any sort so make sure you remind me hyper edit is pretty much the cheat mod for ksp you can move your aircraft build whatever give yourself anything do whatever you want change planetary bodies get rid of atmospheres change gravities all sorts of stuff but i don't really use it unless I'm trying to go for like a nice visual effect or YouTube, etc. So I try not to use that. And if I do, I will definitely let you know. Hangar Extended, before I forget, will allow you to go outside of your hangar to build much bigger aircraft. So if, for instance, if you're building your space station and it has eight different rockets that will all need to be connected and docked together in space around whatever planet, you wanna see what it looks like all together. Hangar Extended allows you to do that while you're outside of the, the hangar itself. So you can go out on to the grass pretty much and just build anything you want as big as you want and bring the Kraken on. So with that being said, let's get into the game. Let's get into my visual settings and what we're going to start with. And then we'll get into the game, explain some mod tools and things like that that are shown on the screen from there. So let's get into it from there. 